Hi friends, it's me Nicole, and today I want to wrap up the books I read and also the documentaries I watched for Yemen for the From and About Asia reading project for July, the month of Yemen and Western Asia. I also want to invite you to watch the whole video because I found out I learned so much about Yemen and I was surprised that how little I personally know about Yemen and how little the international attention Yemen got, especially for its current going on. on Going situation. If you didn't know, Yemen was torn by war for almost eight years now, and people are really, really suffering. But before that, From and About Asia Reading Project is a long term reading project that running from last May in 2021 that celebrate and learn about the diversity of Asian country by reading. We take turns to read one Asian country per month based on their sub regions, and in July, we read about Yemen, and currently in August, we're reading about Japan. I'll link all the information you might want to know down in the description box as well as the Discord invitation link if you want a more in-depth discussion. I read three books for Yemen and also watched two different documentaries. So in this video, I will talk about the books first and then the documentaries. And also I watched a music video which is also fascinating. I'll talk about it briefly later. But before that, I want to talk a little bit about Yemen first. Yemen is a country that has a very long history. Their oral history dated back to the Noah's Ark. Yemen is also the birthplace of coffee, the coffee drink, not the coffee beans. The mud brick buildings of Yemen are the World Heritage Sites marked by the United Nations. They are really, really pretty and smart designed. I'll try to find some pictures and put them here for you to look at. The capital city of Yemen, Sanan, is one of the oldest continuous settled cities in the world. As beautiful as Yemen is, it's also a country that is suffering from war for most of its time in the modern era. There are multiple wars that broke out on the land of Yemen in the 21st century. The ongoing civil war started from 2014. It's been eight years and still continuing. And the war before that started from 2004 and ended on 2010. The current civil war really put people's life in danger because it cut Yemen off from the world and really blocked international aid from going into Yemen. More of that when I'm talking about the documentaries later. Now with that overview, let's dive into the books first. I have written reviews for every book that I'm gonna mention. I will link the links down below in case you want to check them out. The first book I read was a fiction. It's called A Land Without Just Me by Wadi Al-Adal and it's translated by William May. Hatchings. This is a very short book. It only has 96 pages. It's a magical realism mystery thriller. It's centered around the disappearance of a female student called Jasmine in Southern University and also the conspiracy theories that comes with her disappearance. In the blurb of this book, it says it brings up the discussion about coming of age in the land of sexual repression. And by reading this book, I feel like this description is very accurate because this is a multi POV book. So we got many many narrations including Jasmine herself but besides Jasmine all other narrators are men and they are the results of growing up in a land of sexual repression and from their narration you can really see how they were watching or gazing Jasmine or any other women in their life and Jasmine unfortunately has become a target of their sexual imagination and no matter how Jasmine or any other women in the story try to cover themselves costume wise they are still be heavily been seen as a sexual target. However, to clearly communicate the author's ideas, this book also have a lot of sexual descriptions either for their actual behavior or their imagination. And sometimes I could feel that it's a little bit too much, it feels very excessive and sometimes repetitive. Besides the subject matter, as a mystery thriller, this book really did a great job to create a gruesome and dark atmosphere, especially when the magical realism elements kicked in later in the book. It's a very eerie story, not gonna lie. I had nightmare the night after I read this book, so not really 
doesn't happen that often. This book is a solid three star for me, and I'm kind of glad that it's very short because, as I mentioned, I was worried about it being too too repetitive. The next book I read is a nonfiction, and it made me so so sad. It's called I Am Najud, Age Ten and Divorced. It's written by Najud Ali and Dolphin Minoy, and translated by Linda Coverdell. From the title of the book, you can already tell what this memoir is about. In Yemen, child marriage is very very common, especially among girls, because a lot of the families just suffer from poverty and they don't have the ability to bring. Up the girls to an older age, so they oftentimes just marry them off when they were really really young. And also, arranged marriage is very common too. A lot of young girls are married to some man who's way older than them by the arrangement of their parents, mostly by the dads. And Najud was one of them. Najud's childhood was cut off at the age of ten when her dad arranged her to marry a man who is three times of her age. At that time, she didn't even understand the meaning of marriage, and what waited for her is an abusive and brutal relationship. She ended up escaped and became the world's youngest divorcee. So this memoir is talking about what happened around that time, but she not only talking about her story, but also talking about the story of her siblings and also how the society of Yemen works through her own eyes. The writing of the book was not the most polished because Najud was. Very very little when she wrote it, and also she didn't get a lot of education due to the situation of her family. And you can tell that Delphine Minoue really helped her a lot with the writing. But it is also because of that this is a book that is very powerful and very very raw. You can feel that Najud was really eager to tell her stories in order to help herself and also her siblings. In this book, you can clearly tell the difference of life between poor and rich in Yemen just by comparing the situation. Of Nuju's family with the people who helped her. One thing I would love this book to expand on is the justice system in Yemen and how exactly the case was perceived. But I also understand that when Nuju wrote the story, she was still very young and、uh, she was probably like still confused about the whole process as well. Overall, I really appreciate the existence of this book. Especially appreciated Nuju was brave enough to tell her story, especially thinking. About Yemen didn't have a child protection project, so after she tells everything, she still needed to go back to live with her parents, who, in some level, are also her abusers. I also did some research about Nuju's life right now, and it made me really, really sad. If you are also curious, you can also search about her, and maybe we can talk about it. The next book I read is a hardcore nonfiction. It's called Yemen: What Everyone Needs to Know by American scholar. Asher Okabi. This is a nonfiction about Yemen in general that was published last year, so it's pretty up to date. Like I said, this is an overview of Yemen, so it has everything from history to politics to religion to social aspects, including economy, education, or minorities. The part that interested me the most is, of course, the social aspect. But also, I was interested in the last chapter, which is talking about the ongoing civil war. In Yemen, that started 2014. As a nonfiction, this book really did its job, and I think it's very informative. But I also think that your enjoyment or how smooth you can read this book really depends on your interests and、uh, whether you know about Yemen or Middle Eastern countries or not. For example, when I was reading the chapters about the regions, the different power dynamics, the different branches of religions, I found myself reading really very slowly and often seeking help from. On Google, but when I was reading about the culture and the societal issues, I found myself very engaged and didn't feel as hard to read at all. I like how the book is not only presenting dry facts, but also wanted to. Bring up some discussions in a lot of the chapters, and sometimes the author bring up some comparison between Yemen and other countries to help the readers to understand. However, that comes to the issue that this book sometimes feel like very American centered. The author is an American scholar, so it's understandable. But sometimes still, when he says something like, "You can compare." This issue to the America's relationship with Mexico or something like that. I feel like the author assumes that everybody knows a little bit about America and and Mexico relationship. To be fair, most of the readers. 
probably will know the things that he used to compare to. So I think I'm just uh, being nitpicking about it, but it's not a big deal. It's just something to keep in mind. One thing I really liked this book is that you can really tell that the author is paying tribute to Yemeni culture. For example, every chapter started with a poem. At first, I thought this is the author's personal preference, but later on, I read from this book also that there is no big event in Yemen that started without a poet reciting a poem or a piece of oral history. Yemeni culture poetry is very important and well respected, so the author also include one poem for every chapter, which I found fascinating. So overall, this is a very good book to read and learn about Yemen. And this book also mentioned a music video called Habib Khalvi. I'm sure I'm butchering the name, but it means the love of my heart. It's a song about Yemeni Israeli culture, and I found it's really, really amazing to watch and listen to. I'll link the music video down below, and you are more than welcome to check it out. Now I want to talk about the two documentaries that I watched and what I learned from them. The first documentary I watched is called Hunger World. It's a 2020 documentary by American director called Sky Fitzgerald. It focuses on the man-made famine that caused by the civil war in Yemen. And because of the war, the Yemen was pretty much shut off from the world and the international aids couldn't go in. Many, many people, especially children, are suffering from the unfathomable famine and lacking of the resources to get help. This documentary takes us to two most active therapeutic feeding centers for children and follows two female medical workers, a doctor and a nurse, fighting to thwart the spread of starvation. We also follow some cases of extremely starved kids getting treatment, so definitely content warning for medical procedures, extremely starved kids, and death. I also watched a interview to the director of this documentary by Trevor Nova. In this conversation, the director said, no matter the outcome of the patient, the family of the patient of the kids wanted the film crew to document everything, every detail about their kids. Because they feel like this is very important and also this is the only way for the world to know and to help their children. The documentary was not long and it's under one hour and I watched it using the free trial on a streaming provider. So I feel like if you have access to it, if you are okay with the content warnings, I definitely recommend everyone to watch it. Because I just feel like this is so important. This is a documentary that showed us the passive side of the war and the consequences that was spared by the people. When we're talking about war, oftentimes we are talking about the conflicts, the fighting, the bombing. And to me, that's the active side of war. But at the same time, there are also people, like the people in this documentary, they are trapped in the war zone and they need to stand and bear all the consequences and they need to continue their day. These are the people that are living in the passive side of the war. We don't see a lot of them on the news, but they exist and they are suffering. It is such a thought-provoking documentary and like I said, I just want to recommend it to everyone. Next, I watched a documentary called Yemen's Dirty War by DW Documentary. It's a German multilingual TV network. This documentary was released in June this year and it's about the active side of the war. It talks about the progress of the war and the different power groups and how Yemen has actually been divided into two parts with the development of the civil war. Watching this documentary is like reading the book What Everybody Needs to Know About Yemen. It's a very standard documentary talking about the cause and explaining the development of the civil war. One thing I didn't like about this documentary is it has voiceover for every translated conversation, which is fine to me most of the time, but the voiceover in this documentary is extremely plain and emotionless. Maybe they did it intentionally to not have any emotions to influence the viewers, but to me sometimes it's just like too dry to absorb. But I like that this documentary has amazingly designed graphics and animations to show us the map of Yemen and its neighboring countries and different power groups on the land of Middle Eastern 
land. If you want a visual analysis about Yemen's ongoing civil war, I feel like this is a great choice. However, it didn't impact me as much as Hunger World. And that's all the content that I consume for Yemen for the From and About Asia reading project. I'm really glad that we choose to read about Yemen right now with the ongoing situations. And I really truly learned so much from the month of reading. And I appreciate all the other members reading about Yemen in our discussion over at Discord. One thing we found in common about Yemen is that we feel like Yemen didn't get enough international attention. It's partially because Yemen was cut off from the world and it's also partially because Saudi Arabia as a neighboring country of Yemen plays a big part in the Yemen civil war, which is also lead to the result of cutting off Yemen from the world. So in general, my thought is we at least need to know about Yemen. And like the director of Hunger War, Sky Fitzgerald said that we need to make sure that our tax money is not contributing to worsen the situation in Yemen, especially if you are living in some major Western countries. Another thing that I can't stop thinking about after reading the memoir of Najub is the right for girls education. So I'll link some resource of how we can help down below if you want to take some action. And that's it for today. If you watched to the end, I applaud you and thank you so much. Please let me know if you have any thoughts about anything that I mentioned or the things that I didn't mention that you know about Yemen or like any other countries where like conflict or all of that the books, the documentaries, the music, and all other thing. Please let me know. And also, don't forget to say hi in the comment section down below. Thumbs up to this video if you liked it. Until next time, happy reading, stay healthy and safe.